this is a solid, uh, sound university that does put a lot of things above what the final score is on Saturday. Ultimately, that does come into play, but this is still a university that values uh, education and integrity. And I, I don't think that there's any chance of that. Uh, but but I, I, you do have to be concerned, though, because all that recruiting in, in, in today's environment, you, you can have the number two or three recruiting class in the country. And everything I'm saying right now can also be applied to Texas A&M, although the circumstances are different. And those players, by the time we get to late December, if they see this program in total chaos, they're going to say, you know what, I'm not going there. I don't care if I've committed or not. I don't care if I committed a year ago. So it's a much it's a dicier situation than it used to be. With all the uh, with all the elements, and even once you get them, of course, with with the transfer portal. So I I, I think it's uh, you know me guys. I'm I'm always quick to to jump the gun on anything, but I'm not going to jump the gun yet on Marcus Freeman. Yeah, we can be critical. We can wonder whether this was a great coach. And one more thing, Key, he didn't take over a dumpster fire. Okay, <laughs> he took over a program that was that was spinning along very very well under Brian Kelly, that had been to two playoffs in recent years. And last year finished fifth in the country. So let's let's not get too carried away on talking about the how he was forced into this and he had no time. Uh, he he can pick he could have picked his own staff. He did pick his own staff, and he immediately t- uh, turned that into one of the top recruiting classes in the country. Well, you made me feel a little bit better by th- telling me this because you know you know how it is, coaches that of of color and I and I'll say it. Their, their coaching wins and losses are like dog years, especially <laughs> the losses part. Paul yeah, Feinbaum. Seven jo- losses per loss. Yeah, it's Paul like a white Fein- coach losing seven times. Paul Feinbaum jo- joined us this morning on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max. Uh, Paul, which upset this weekend, this past weekend in college football, caught you by surprise the most? Well, I think we talked about it, one of them, but the other one was, was Marshall uh, beating Texas A&M. Uh, I mean, excuse me, I'm Marshall beating Notre Dame and, and Appalachian State beating Texas A&M because that, that is simply inexcusable. Uh, yeah, let's, we, can, we can look at Marcus Freeman and say it is trans, it's a transitional situation. First year sometimes can be very difficult when you've never been a head coach. But what is Jimbo Fisher's excuse? The guy's been a head coach for a long time. He's won a national championship. Uh, he, he bragged about the number one recruiting class. He's taken shots at Nick Saban, and he laid one of the biggest eggs I've ever seen last week. And that's coming up. And by the way, that's coming after a pretty bad season. And, and you know, if you you can't take away the Alabama win last year, but but he also lost to Arkansas and Mississippi State and uh, LSU, and would have, would have lost a bowl game, guys, if he had had enough courage to take his team to a bowl game. But he didn't. Uh, he waved the white flag with ten ten days before, which nobody, nobody has done in the era of COVID. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's some serious questions that have to be asked. He's also making – he's got a $100 million contract. He's got the best facilities in the country. So, Keyshawn, I ask you, what's his excuse? Yeah, there, there, is, there is no excuse. I told Jay Will when this all happened and went down, Nick Saban would never lose to Appalachia State. Yeah, and, Paul, let me transition to, to Alabama for a second because read an article about Sark and how much they like him in Texas right now with the game they had against Alabama. What do you think about that near loss for the Crimson Tide? Well, I, mean, I, I think they got exposed. They got exposed, Jay Will. Uh, their offensive line uh, doesn't look any better than it did last year when it gave up multiple sacks uh, against Auburn and, all, and also against uh, Georgia in the championship game and had Bryce Young running for his life. Uh, the wide receivers did not look a lead after we were told they would be. And, and, and quite frankly, Will Anderson and the defense didn't look uh, that great either. So I, I think uh, I'm, I'm not ruling them out, but, but Saban's capable. But this team does, is not what we, to- we were told they were a couple of weeks ago. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.